Brightstorm has thousands of high-quality videos covering all major subjects. Please check out more at www.brightstorm.com. All right, so we're going to talk about hybridization of atomic orbitals. And just like you would think of hybrid, when something else, when something's hybridized that you're familiar with, let's say hybrid cars or hybrid brakes, there are two ideas of um, two separate types of cars, one being electric and one being gas, and kind of combining together to make a new hybrid car. It's a completely new, different type of car. Or bikes, for example, mountain bike and road bike, they come together to form a new type of bike called a hybrid bike. We're going to do the same thing with atomic orbitals. We're going to bring two different orbitals together to make a completely new orbital. We're going to call that orbital hybridiz we call that process hybridization a process in which atomic orbitals are mixed to form new identical orbitals. So these are identical in energy. All right, so <clears throat> let's talk about why we're actually going to do this. Why is this even necessary? So let's start with an example of carbon tetrachloride. All right, so carbon tetrachloride is a single carbon atom bonded to four chlorine atoms. So we agree, we have to agree that all these bonds, these four bonds, are equal in energy. One is not more energetic than the other. Um, they all have, not, one's not more special or anything than the other one. So how do we make sure that, they, that that's the case? When you look at the orbitals that carbon has in, in the valence shell, we have a 2s orbital and we have three equal in energy p orbitals. Okay, so we know carbon has four electrons. We're going to denote them. Okay, so we want to have four equal places where chlorine can come in and bond with this carbon. So we're going to hybridize all these orbitals to make four equal, uh, equal in energy orbitals. So we're going to have four new orbitals, and we're going to call them the 1s, and three of them are from p, so we're going to call it sp3. One from s, three from p. And we're going to spread these out just like Hun's rule tells us to, and we're going to say, okay, we have four electrons, which gives us four equal places for chlorine to come in and actually bond with that carbon. So chlorine can come in here, 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 and here, and make four of those bonds, like you, can, like you see in the picture. All right, so what actually will get hybridized? What do we create that actually makes it so that um, these equal orbitals are necessary? So we know all single bonds are going to be hybridized because a single bonds, there's not one that's more energetic than the other. So all single bonds are going to be hybridized. Because they're hybridized um, bonds, we're going to now call single bonds sigma bonds. It's just the way they overlap, the way the orbitals overlap. We're going to call them, denote them sigma bonds. And we also want to say that lone pairs are also going to be hybridized because they're not higher or lower in energy than those bonds either. So let's look at uh, ammonia as an example. Ammonia, if you look at nitrogen within ammonia, it has these two lone pair of electrons. So ammonia before had the same thing. Ammonia has five valence electrons. So two, three, four, five. These should be the same. I'm sorry, they're kind of uneven. They should actually be the same in energy. And we have the five electrons. We're going to hybridize all of them. We need to have one, two, three of these are the same along with this fourth one. So we need to have all four of these the same. So we're going to have, again, four equal in energy. We're going to call it sp3, one from s, three from p. One, two, three, four, five. Here's our lone pair, and here's the hydrogens are going to come in and bond with them. All equal in energy. So we have these new hybrid orbitals. OK. Um, <clears throat> what about when we have multiple bonds? There are definitely cases when we have multiple bonds, double bonds and triple bonds. So what happens in those guys? Well, one of those bonds within a multiple bond is called a sigma bond. And again, don't forget, sigma bonds are hybridized. So one of those bonds is going to be hybridized. The rest of those bonds are called pi bonds. Those pi bonds are just p orbitals overlapping each other. Um, they are only p orbitals. They're a little bit higher in energy. They actually are different in energy. So we're going to actually keep them separated. So we have one sigma and one pi. So let's look at carbon dioxide here. We have a double bond. All right, one of these is going to be a sigma bond. We're going to denote that with a sigma. And one of the bonds is going to be a pi bond. We'll denote that with a pi. These are only p orbitals. These are hybridized orbitals. Within just, we're just talking about the carbon right now. OK, so carbon we already know looks like this. But we want to save two of the p orbitals. And I don't care which two I save. It doesn't really matter. They're all the same in energy. I don't care. I'm just going to save these just for, just for practical purposes. These are going to be the ones used in pi bonding. So I'm going to save those so I'm going to hybridize 1s and the other p. So instead of being sp3 this time, it's just going to be sp, 1s and 1p, sp orbitals. Let's look at the oxygen. Oxygen in it also has um, a sigma bond, a pi bond, but notice it has the lone pairs. So the sigma bond and the lone pairs are going to be hybridized, but not the pi bond. We're going to leave this alone. So we need three hybrid orbitals, one from p and two from, yeah, sorry, one from s and two from p. So it's going to be sp2. So this guy is going to be sp2. 
this guy was SP, don't forget. Its orbitals are SP. It doesn't matter that these guys have different types of orbitals. Um, we just want to make sure that the orbitals within the atom itself are the same. So let's look at triple bond. Triple bond one is sigma, don't forget. So we're going to say this is sigma. And these two are pi. Okay? So these two are just P. We're going to ignore them. And this nitrogen has needs two, one for the lone pair and one for the sigma, hybridized orbitals. So we need two, one from S, one from P. So we're going to call this SP. This also is just SP. If we look at ozone, O3, um, all three of these are a little bit different. So this guy has one, two, three lone pairs and one sigma bond. So it needs four, one from S, three from P. So it's going to be SP3. Oxygen is going to need, it has two sigma bonds, one from here, one from here, and the lone pair. So it needs three. So it's just going to be SP2. One from S, two from P. This guy over here has one sigma bond and two lone pairs. Again, it's um, three hybridized orbitals. So it's going to be sp2, one from s, two from p. So um, hopefully that made it a little bit easier for you to figure out hybridized orbitals. And by two, I can't do this with you two laughing back there. <laughs> so if we had, no, that's not right, three coplanar points. So have you ever gotten off an airplane? <laughs> That should be... Less than. Yeah. Dang. Is it like 500 degrees in here or what? All right, so when you're in chemistry class, you're going to be doing a lot of work. You're going to be starting over. So as an example, we could consider like you've got a chain hanging from two, um, two fix. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>